build the best football team in the SEC Conference. We're going to build the best football program in the SEC Conference. You have now arrived at Stadium in Bay. The kick, it's been blocked! You have now arrived at Stadium and Jail. Boys and girls, ladies and gents, welcome to another episode of Stadium Miguel. It's your favorite Uncle Silk. It's Dan. And Del Torre. Same corner, same time. Augusta on the horizon for my man, Nick. What's up, yeah. brothers? Yeah. Come on. Um, heading up today. We'll be there Tuesday. Practice round. My second time in Augusta. Looking forward to it. More uh, on my side. More flags on the way. Um First time going to Augusta with a joint bank account. Nice. Oh, you said joint. I was about to say, yo. <laughs> with a joint bank account. Uh, so uh, hopefully. Uh, Does that mean you have excess funds or limited? Oh, yeah. In my mind. In, in my, my mind, mind, it's a dual income household with no kids. Right. Dinos. Uh, so plenty Dinks. of expensive Sorry, income. Uh, we'll report back when the credit card bill comes to the house uh in a month or so we'll report back uh with uh what the reaction will be i'm sure it'll be but well, listen, uh, well Mike never, she gets Mike, it right you just never Mike know, never right? go again never could i've been lucky to be uh to to get there twice but might never go again so i'm oh for like 17 so yeah you gotta mm-hmm. treat it gotta treat it as if you're never gonna be there again uh, right and i will i plan on it um so how's your weekend Man, it's just a lot of work. I hate to tell y'all this every week, but yeah. that's just that's just all I be doing on the weekends these days, man. So just work down to Miami again, facing heavy traffic and shenanigans. I actually interviewed James Houston. It was oh, actually wow. a, a very great conversation, man. But just work, no play, unfortunately. Work, no play. You want to talk yep. a little bit about uh, flow factory? Oh yeah, man. Shot. We did our lunch last week, which was you know, exciting for me, at least, you know what I'm saying? Like, just been working on this for, like, the last three, four, maybe five, six, seven months, to be real. We've been, since, mm-hmm. like, November of last year, plotting this, Um, me and some of the team. So we launched, rebranded, roll-up network into a Flow Factory podcast. Uh, our future, we plan on just covering the entire state from UCF, FIU, FAU, Bethune, uh, fam, you, et cetera. So we, we're going to cover the entire state as we, you know, work this thing out in phases. But we launched this week with the Greg Russo interview, former Kane, current Buffalo Bill defensive end. Uh, this week, we should be dropping some more here. I'm not sure which interview we're going to drop this week, but we got about 10 of them in the chamber. Uh, we're going to keep it flowing. If you haven't checked that interview out, go subscribe, like all of that on YouTube, Flow Factory, F-L-O, short for Florida. That's it. Appreciate the love, man, for everybody that Appreciate you guys retweeting, sharing. Absolutely, brother. It's it's awesome. It's uh, first interview was great. Looking forward to seeing what you guys do. Uh, good chemistry, obviously. Great visuals uh, in all of that. So shout out to uh, is Lions still doing all of it or? No, no, no. We oh, uh, oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, let's get uh, let's get into the show. Shout out to my parents. They were in town this weekend, so appreciate them coming up uh, to beautiful uh, Tampa. I uh, got to take him out on the boat, saw a bunch of lions, or a bunch of lions, wow, a bunch of dolphins. Uh, that was really, really cool. Um, normally, when you get out there, you're able to see one or two. Uh, this time, we were able to see like 15 or 20 of them, so that was really, really cool. So, shout out to them. Appreciate them for uh, for coming up to Tampa from the beautiful 954. Let's get into the show uh, today. A very different and 
more somber tone from Nick about baseball. So those of you that complained last week, uh, you won't have to hear much about it today. So, uh, but anyway, before we get into the show, what happens always, when you win on Tuesday, you get swept on the weekend. Screw yeah. those Tuesday games. I'm telling you what, I'm telling you what. So uh, let's give a quick shout out to our friends over at Lucy. If you are looking for nicotine that is delivered straight to your door, not the gas station stuff, 100% pure nicotine, always tobacco free products, anywhere from pouches uh, to the breakers that we've talked about to gum, anywhere from two milligrams all the way up to 12 milligrams for those of you that are heavy users. Um, go check out Lucy. That's lucy.co forward slash stadium. You'll get 20% off of your first order. If you sign up for a subscription plan, you get 15% additional uh, off of that. Uh, you can set up that prescription or a subscription, pardon me, for however long uh, you want to go in between however many you want to buy at a particular time. All of the flavors that you're used to from mint and wintergreen to um, apple ice and espresso. Uh, Nick has talked heavily about that espresso with coffee combo. It's elite stuff. Uh, and, um, nicotine's a new tropic, so it's supposed to help, uh, with some other things. You can go and do some research about that, about, uh, brain activity, but go check out lucy.co forward slash stadium, uh, or at checkout. It's going to get you 20% off your order, free shipping, 30 day refund policy. They have the subscription as well. And here's the fine print. Lucy products are only for a day. Adults of legal age and every order is age verified. Warning, this product does contain nicotine and nicotine is an addictive chemical. All right, Nick. L Lucy will be in Augusta. Lucy Accountability time Augusta. for you, Nick. Ready to go. Ready to go. All right, Nick. Um, you've got, we're going to start the timer here. You've got 90 seconds. Uh, no, we need more than 90 baseball. seconds. We need we need a little bit of accountability from Nick. With yeah, the that's a good point. Eyes, you set the people up, man. Yeah, uh, Florida had went into the series having won 20 of the last 21 against Missouri. Um, mm. Missouri now 20 of the last 24. Yes, still still a great still a great ratio, better than a mm. Darren Ravel tweet ratio. Um, just a tough week. Uh, you did not get a good start Friday. Only got two hits. So even though you don't get a good start on Friday from Brandon Neely, you're you're not going to win many games when you get two hits um saturday sunday kind of more of the same florida sunday uh looked to be better um but you get bases loaded no outs in the ninth inning when you're up two runs uh and you come away with nothing three straight strikeouts um you can question should kevin o'sullivan have brought luke mcneely in to a clean inning in the ninth did you leave kate fisher in too long mm. on sunday after he threw on friday um but if you're striking out three straight times with base loaded no outs in the ninth inning there's not much you can do as a coach there um yeah <laughs> shout out to cam cody dent dan i think dan was in school at the same time cody dent it was. was yeah uh cody dent was as beloved a Gator um, as who was that? Who was uh, the Basque? Dan Werner. Dan, Dan Werner. Werner and Cody Dent. Yes. Uh, yes. Beloved the Gators. Um, oh. Yeah. Brutal week. Brutal week for Florida. Um, I said two weeks ago, I thought they needed to win five of six. Uh, their last two weekends, they go two and four instead. Uh, now the stretch coming up is uh, Florida State Tuesday, mm. South Carolina, who just struggled, just lost a weekend series and dropped out of the top 25. Um, lost to Georgia, right? Yeah, Georgia Georgia and Kentucky are playing really well. Uh, or Georgia's mm. okay, but Kentucky's 10-1 and one, um, or 11-1. Um, Florida has FSU coming up Tuesday night. Uh, I'll maybe watch that. Probably not. Uh, cause I'll be in Augusta, but then South Carolina cool, at Vanderbilt. Anytime you get the chance to put that in there, just do it. Throw my hat today too. Yeah. So South Carolina, uh, at home at Vanderbilt at number one, Arkansas, uh, Tennessee, and then Kentucky. So just a brutal stretch, um, coming up for Florida. They got to figure out something with the bats, um, in sec play. Florida has been struggling to hit the ball. Um, but you, you listen. It's 
April 8th. Uh, mm-hmm. About half, more than half the season is done. Half of the, almost half of the SEC schedule is done. Um, you are what you are at this point. There's no free agency. You can't make any trades. This is the team you have, and you got to get some guys hitting the hitting the baseball. Uh, and I think Florida has been really dependent on home runs um, this year. And then they go to Missouri and the wind's blowing in the first two nights and, and you're not getting that, you know, that home run power uh, ball's not leaving the yard. So they got to find some way, find a way to win some games. And, and uh, that starts this week. Very All right. nice. All right, so uh, baseball is struggling. Um, you know. They dropped from uh, six to twenty-four uh, in D1 baseball. Right. Yeah, I mean seventeen and fourteen, six and six SEC. Um, you could easily be an unranked team. That's an unranked resume, in my opinion. It's an unranked resume for sure. A couple of big series wins, but uh, but not much uh, other than that recently. Gator softball. Um, they played again today. Uh, they went. One and one so far against LSU on some top 10 matchups. So that's been fun to watch. I want to give a quick shout out before we get into football. The golf team is currently uh, winning the Calusa Cup, which is uh, which is fantastic for them. Um, doing really, really well this year, especially considering the number of people that uh, graduated from the program last year and now on the Corn Ferry. And then a uh, shout out to uh, the women's gymnastics program, uh, which is going to be heading to the NCAA finals in gymnastics. So congratulations to them. They won their uh, regional against Utah, Michigan State, and Missouri. So at least one Florida program took care of Missouri this week. Uh, uh, ATP Houston, Ben Shelton uh, won that. And uh, I think it was in his semifinal match. They you know the tennis, yeah. Uh, the tennis players do like that sharpie thing. He wrote "Go Gators" after I think he won his semifinal match. Um, but shout out to Ben Shelton. I think it's his second tournament win as a pro. Yeah, and then shout out to the women's tennis team who beat Kentucky uh, this past weekend. They're now fourteen and seven on the season. So uh, speaking maybe of next Kentucky, week, we'll- wild Coach Cal yeah. just dipping. Um. Kind of reminds me, uh, I know this is not a new take. Uh, a bunch of people have said kind of the Jimbo Fisher to Texas A&M move. Um, maybe the fan base is growing a little tired. Obviously, there were some questions whether John Calipari would come back uh, to Kentucky this year. Uh, but uh, that hasn't been officially announced, right? It's just that that's where their their eyes and, and ears are trained on at Arkansas. Um, like they were throwing out numbers, five years, tens of millions of dollars on the timeline last night. Um, oh, wow. but, uh, Arkansas has not, you know, Arkansas and Cal have not, you know, officially announced anything, but yeah. it does seem to be that way at some point. I don't know if you, you're coming back to Kentucky. I think you get the Jimbo vibes just because it got to a point at FSU where you almost outstay your welcome despite winning a national championship. Um, Kind of the same thing with Cal. Cal does leave like thirty-three million dollars on the table. There's no buyout. There's no buyout for Arkansas, but leaves like thirty-three million dollars on the table. And he had some like crazy lifelong ambassador clause in his contract as well, where like even if he stepped away from coaching, that they would just continue to pay him to be in some sort of front office role. Choosing to live in. Choosing to live in Arkansas is insane. To be honest with you, it uh shout out to uh, on purpose. That's crazy. <laughs> shout out, shout out to the uh, family uh, of Tucker Carlson. I think uh, Big Chicken Tyson Tyson. Uh, I think Tyson Big Chicken got involved here. Uh, mm, Big Chicken. Get, Walmart people. Get, no. Walmart. So Wal- the the Walmart people, from my understanding, they in two thousand two they made a three hundred million dollar donation to the mm. university of arkansas but like for the college right I know that walmart gives a ton of money to the athletic program that's this correct was big this was big chicken yeah big this chicken tyson's very involved i know in this one they've been very involved in uh, a number of sports things recently over there so um you know i don't i don't know 
maybe I, I, I can't wait to see K K Cal calling the hogs. This to me is like a, a northeastern Italian man, slicked back hair, four thousand dollars suits, and he's going to be doing a woo pig suey. Fantastic! Yeah, yeah. Um, um, content. Hurdle Drake to right show up. Dra no, yeah, no, no. yeah. Listen, I don't think Drake's Drake hanging out in the Ozarks or in Fayetteville <laughs> or Bentonville. Listen, with with the amount of millionaire billionaires that fly in and out of Bentonville, Drake Drake's plane will go there once, and he might look around and be like, "Okay." I read a Cal, stat. You got me. It could, got me it could up. be wrong, but Bentonville, gosh, Arkansas, man. is the has the highest concentration of private airplanes per capita of anywhere in the United States. It'd be like that yeah. in Omaha. I yeah. remember the first time I went to Omaha, Nebraska, yeah. the, the Uber driver told me that there's more billionaires per capita in Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah. Anywhere else in the country. Cause of everyone. Yeah. Uh, the Walmart people, the Tyson people, the tangentially associated to Walmart and Tyson, a lot of, a lot of money there. Um, I've been to Arkansas a number of times. The Ozarks are very pretty. The rest of it is, you know. Sorry, Hurdle 25. There's some nice areas in Arkansas. I went, I went one nice time. When, I went one time when Florida played at Arkansas, and I think we had like like flight delays. And I remember getting to a bar at like 1030 and then being like, hey, we stopped selling alcohol now. Yeah. I'm like, ma'am. Yeah. What? Yeah, so and we all like to have fun. So, so John Calipari potentially to Arkansas. I know there's some uh, big names that people are throwing around. The idea that Billy Donovan might come back to college. I don't see that happening, but you know, again, Kentucky's going to throw around as much money as they want. So, you know, we'll we'll keep uh, keep a lookout for for what happens at Kentucky. That would be uh, interesting because I think Billy. I think Billy got out of college basketball because of where recruiting was um, in terms of, you know, hundred dollar handshakes. Yeah. Uh, Nick Saban chargers um, and like all the illegal backdoors. Now it's just kind of like he's been in the NBA so long and it's just like, Hey, this is essentially the NBA. We have free agency mm -hmm. uh, twice a year when the portal opens uh, and you can go buy players. And if you go to the University of Kentucky, yeah, the money that they would be throw into a fresh start, uh, a Billy Donovan coach, maybe, maybe. Yeah. I think Bulls fans are are ready to run Billy out of town too. Yeah, I think they're on the verge of another uh, rebuild there in Chicago. Now, I'm not a basketball connoisseur; I don't watch much of it, but uh, but that's that's the word on the street. It's a word on the street. So, all right, well, let's get into football while most people are here. So before we get into football, uh, make sure that you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, comment, join us in conversation, do all that kind of stuff on the side here. You guys always usually led by Tawan um, have some great enthusiastic conversations uh, on, uh, on the side there. All right, Nick, uh, orange and blue debut is on Saturday. Uh, baseball is also on Saturday. So if you're going up there, definitely an opportunity uh, to um, to go catch out multiple sports while you're there. Um, Nick, give us give us some uh, some football updates. We have the second scrimmage. Uh, a lot of players will run through those. But uh, what's the the feeling around the program? Is it is it spring hype or are things getting better? Uh, I mean, I always tell my, my friends this who, you know, like other teams, like spring is just the time for positivity. Like what, what bad news outside of like injuries, you know, is, is coming out of spring camp. Everyone is, is, it's all happy news at a spring camp. Um, Florida, I, I think Florida continues to say publicly that they like the offensive line, that they think that the pocket's cleaner, that it's better. That's one of my big questions. I think you're still going to go in the portal and look for interior offensive line help. Um, but I think the biggest takeaway for me this, this spring has been I like the secondary a lot more. Um, I think Eugene Wilson still – pretty unguardable 
uh, in practice, despite me thinking that the secondary is much more athletic, uh, but you need some sort of help there. Um, I wrote it last week that like that you need another receiver that they starting. And I think I've said it on the show and people are just like, either don't want to hear it. Think I'm lying, but like there are three starting receivers are Khalil Jackson, uh, Chamiri DK and Eugene Wilson. And then behind them is like maybe Aiden Mizell and Marcus Burke. Um, but I'm kind of at like a, I believe when I see it with Marcus Burke, I think he's come a long way maturity wise. He's been kind of his own worst enemy with his attitude and getting put in the doghouse because it's not, it's not talent. He's super talented, um, big, long, fast, goes up, competes, catches the ball, but doesn't get opportunities for uh, a number of reasons off the field. So there's some guys in the receiver room, but like Florida will will go into the portal looking for another outside type of receiver. So, like I said, in 2020, it was easier to cover Kadarius Tony when Kyle Pitts was out with a concussion. It's going to be easier for defensive coordinators to scheme Eugene Wilson out of games or limit him if you don't have somebody else step up. But there definitely is an instant connection with, with Graham Mertz and, and DK. Um and I think one thing that Graham told us that I thought was interesting was it's helped DK get up to speed by Graham. You know, at, uh, there's only so many routes you can run, but everyone calls them a certain thing. And Graham will call a play and can just tell DK, you know, until he gets up to speed, like, hey, this is whatever they called it at Wisconsin. And now DK and Graham are on the same page, even though mm. he's, you know, learning Spanish, I guess. It would be All right. right. So orange blue debut, uh, gonna go through it a little bit. Are we still calling it the orange and blue debut? Or is it just I do, blue debut? I do. Yeah, just yeah. me. All right. I, they used to call it that. I think it's a good name. So we're gonna talk about all of the associated players, and we're gonna give some some shout outs to. I know some secondary transfers, uh, but I know that this is gonna be. Uh, there's gonna be a couple of questions about this, but before we do that, I do want to give a shout out. Vance Williams super chat donation said, no question. Just wanting to shout out my brother Zach and Sean, both great dads, diehard Gator fans, and huge stadium and Gale fans. Vance, I appreciate that, and I know Zach and Sean will appreciate that as well. So thank you so much uh, for that. Uh, on the Orange and Blue debut, how they're going to divide the roster uh, they are going to divide up the players and they're going to try to, this is a Billy Napier quote, pardon me, uh, divide up the players to try to make the game as competitive as possible based off of who's available. And then we allowed the veteran players on each team to draft all parts of the organization. So we die, divide the organization in half and we give them a little ownership of, hey, I want this guy to be my OC. I want this guy to be my DC. He's going to be the assistant coach. They pick their strength staff. They pick their, and then he said every part of the building is broken in half and then we give the players some just to make it competitive. You either win or lose. And I think it's healthy and certainly makes it fun. So I know that we talked a little bit about that. Oh, sorry. There's an additional quote here it says we'll meet with the veteran players at some point Thursday before practice. Then we'll announce the team's post-practice and they'll have their own Friday prep independent of each other to try to simulate a game Friday and then get them ready. Uh, so I know that there was some discussion about how those teams would be picked and chose, uh, whether there's going to be an actual draft or not. looks like the coaching staff will divide the teams and then they will pick their support staff. I think cool. that's cool. I think that's cool. Cause it, um, if you let the players pick, you might get unbalanced teams. It, it's also, um, you know, I wrote in there, it says choreographed as WrestleMania. Don't come for me nerds. Um, <laughs> But, but it um, like you can manufacture a game that's 56 to nothing if you're the coaching staff just mm -hmm. by the way you split teams up. Um, you can manufacture a low scoring game uh, if you want to by the way you split the team up and the way you call plays. You can it's your game. You don't even have to play 11 on 11 football. Um, you don't have to let the defense blitz. You you can make the defense play man if you want to. 
Um, so you can manufacture whatever you want. That's not what this coaching staff wants to do. Uh, they want it to be a competitive game. I think you'll see a lot of like ones versus ones, ones versus twos, twos versus twos. Um, so I'm hoping that it's a better game than last year. Um, don't let, don't give people opportunity to, to troll you. Uh, but it's also spring. So there's the caveat of like, if Florida goes out and the orange and blue teams, it's a 50 to 42 game. People are like, all right, well, the defense sucks again. Um, and if you go out and you have another, another seven to 10 barn burner, like last year, uh, people are like, this sucks. Can't believe I spent money in a hotel to come and watch this. So you're kind of damned if you do damned, if you don't in the spring. Checking out the, um, checking out the scrimmage like notes and updates. I thought it was interesting that TJ seriously was sprung into the uh, to starting lineup. I know we do need some help on the edge and like Pat rushing the passer was definitely a concern of mine. Um, I know Princely Umi nearly got close a lot last year. His PFF grades were good, but we didn't affect the passer uh, and, and, and get the quarterbacks off of their spot a lot last year. What's the starting for right now, Nick, with, with the defensive line? Um, I think Justice Boom factors into that, uh, and he's not he's not going to go through everything. So I think when you get to the the when you get to August thirty first, I think it'll be um, Searcy Boone, Cam, and Caleb. Um, I think Caleb Caleb Banks is taking a big jump, um, and, and that's a position where I thought, shoot, Joey Slacken might come in and steal that job. Um, but I think Caleb Banks will probably hold on to that and it'll be interesting to see what kind of rotation you have. A, you have a deep enough room inside to limit guys to 15, 20 snaps. Um, you know, we're looking at two years ago, Gervon Dexter playing 65 snaps in the season yeah. opener against Utah uh, at 315, 20 pounds is wild. Um, so you're in a much better place just from a, a depth standpoint, but I think that'll be the four. Searcy's a guy. Uh, and then when you get to passing downs, Kelby Collins has made that move inside. He's clearly your uh, third and long defensive, you know, strong side defensive end, defensive tackle. Um, so there's they're playing with a bunch of different things. I asked, I asked Kelby, is this a cross training just for the spring kind of thing, or is this long term? And, and he said it's long term. So, with that move now is going to come with adjusting to being double teamed. When you play Jack or edge or, or even defensive end, you can line up on outside the hash mark if you want to and use your speed. Now you're inside with 600 pounds of offensive linemen, both getting their hands on you and, and still trying to have to be productive and effective. So I think that's an, has been an adjustment for him. Um, and, and it'll be interesting to see if he sticks there. Um, I think they do like him there, um, but I, I just think he's too talented to be, you know, a one down player or, right. or, or a super situational player. Yeah, that depth is going to be magical compared to what we had right. last year. Um, I also like the energy of Chapman. I know he came in with not a lot of experience, but just watching the clips of him practice or, or, or you guys do your little 20 minute like him telling Caleb Banks body language, your body language, because players are mope sometimes, and you start getting into your little routine. But just hearing some communication at, at spring camp, watching the D-line perform a little bit, I do like Chapman. I do like the depth that we got. We'll see how it mm -hmm. all plays out. Slackman not starting is super interesting because yeah. nine times out of ten, you bring a transfer in, especially late in his career, you're expecting him to start. So that just means good news with, with uh, Caleb Banks. Yeah, yeah I, no, I think Caleb's taking, taking a step. For sure. And Slackman also is is still coming off of uh, I mean, he's been out of his non-contact jersey, but still coming off of a bicep tear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's it's going to be really good to see. It's been a while since the Gators have had true depth along the entirety of the offensive line. Right. So our defensive line. Partner. So it does. It does seem to me like that bodes well for hopefully some improvement. And I know that that's something that we bemoaned a lot on this show was being able to get to the quarterback and to be able to affect the passer um, only helps the the second level and the third level of the defense as well, right? So those they they have to play in concert with one another. 
DBs playing on islands without affecting the passer. It's hard. It's a hard job to do. Right. And obviously you had a lot of young safeties and everything else last year as well. So looking forward to hopefully having the Florida Gators have a, uh, a defensive line that could, could penetrate and, and make some impact uh, at the line of scrimmage as well as affecting the passer. So that's great there. Um, speaking of secondary, uh, it does seem to me like the Gators have gotten some good ones out of the portal uh, this year, uh, including DJ Douglas. He seems to be the guy that transferred from uh, um, from Tulane. Uh, he had a pick six during their scrimmage, uh, but apparently DJ Douglas has is, is done a fantastic job this spring. Uh, Nick, is that what you're hearing um, outside of just the, the big plays at these scrimmage events? Yeah, he, I think it's, um, it probably comes with him being older, um, but he's just consistent and there aren't like bad days, you know, sprinkled into, in, into camp. Um, he's a guy too, that I think can play nickel play safety. I, I've said here before, I think that Traquez, Traquez and, and DJ both can play nickel, but you have five years of film of them doing that, which is why Florida has put just Aaron Gates and Sharif Dents in there. Um, but yeah, Douglas is super consistent. He's a sound tackler. Um, and he can make plays with, with, with the ball in the air. So huge guy, probably the, the one that fans didn't embrace as much as, as Bridges or, or Turner. Cause it was a former walk on in Alabama and then he went to Tulane, but, but a player who I think is, is going to play a ton for Florida this year. I'm watching, speaking of DBs, I'm watching, uh, or concerned or curious, I would say that's a better word. I'm curious to what Jordan Castell is looking like. Um, the transfers, we had a lot of different options at safety. I heard Josiah Davis is having a good spring camp as an early enrollee. Jordan Castell started as a freshman quite a bit last year. Uh, that it's tough to play that position as a freshman, but what's, what's his development look like so far? Spring, hurting buzz. Uh, he, he's not doing any contact. So he had, he had shoulder surgery after, uh, last season. Um, and, uh, he's, I, I project him as a starter. I think Florida views him as a starter. I would say him and Asa Turner, uh, the Washington transfer. Um, but I think the reason you're not hearing buzz is that he's, he's been in a non-contact Jersey. Anytime you go 11 on 11, seven on seven, um, he's not even doing some of the, you know, one-on-one drills when it's just uh, DBs and receivers because uh, they don't want him re-injuring that shoulder. Mm. So what, what are we what are we looking at? And I know Harrison asked a question. Starting at safety, uh, you have a couple of freshmen that are moving into sophomores. You bring in DJ Douglas, Asa Turner. Uh, what's What do you envision as – the rep count there in terms of who gets the most, who's next off the bench. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think because after spring um, or summer, fall camp, um, I'll, I'll want to see, are you rolling with four safeties, leaving Bridges and, and uh, DJ Douglas back there with Asa and, and Jordan, or are you just trying to get your best five, six defensive backs on the field? Right. And and if that means Aaron Gates is playing back up and DJ Douglas is starting at star um, or at nickel, then that that would change the rep count. So I think that that still remains to be seen. Florida's got to get healthier. Uh, you're not really worried about Jordan Castell being out or Justice Boone or Miles Graham. Um Derek Wingo, Shamar James, uh, like the defense, I think, and maybe that should be a concern. Uh, might be nitpicky, but like the defense is out. Like the linebacker room uh, even lost Manny Nunnery for a couple of practices after uh, a groin injury in the first scrimmage. So, like, oh, and he's defense. coming back. I don't think we ever mentioned it on the show. He took his name out of the transfer portal, at least for now. I mean, yeah, he, I think he I, went, I, it's an important note, Nick. Come on. Ahead. This is a well, new went, show. He went into the transfer portal and then came back and has been practicing. Um, so I, so I think he officially took his name out. Nice. But had mentally been out. But shout out to Dan. Credit Dan. 
just bring the facts to the show. You know facts. what I mean? I want to make sure that everybody gets their flowers and that nobody goes to the bar to meet with their friends. Man, like, yeah, well, Manny Nunnery is still in the transfer portal because he's not. He was making important. making Stadium Miguel listeners sound smarter at bars. I just want to make sure you know. I just want to make sure you know. So, uh, according to some intel notes that you have, uh, some players that have also stood out that we have not yet mentioned on the defensive side of the ball: Devin Moore, uh, Sharif Denson. And Josiah Davis, I think you mentioned him as well. Was it Teddy Foster that had the hit on Eugene Wilson? Yeah, well, man that wins. did the rounds. Shout out to Sarasota great Teddy Foster. Uh, some some guys. Um, Billy Napier said this is the best we've tackled since we've been here, and I think in particular the secondary. That's yeah. news to our ears. Now again, we'll lace the pads up on August thirty first, and we'll see. But. Those are things that you want to hear. Yeah, I like that that tackle uh, drill. It was I, I'm not sure if it was Oklahoma drill exactly what it was, but just great contact, great form tackle by a true freshman. Uh, in a real game, I like Trey Wilson to beat anybody on one on one open field. Like he's gonna make he's gonna make Teddy missing a scrimmage, but it's a tackling drill, and they gotta collide. Overall, you like to see that from Teddy. Yeah. Absolutely. Low man wins. Yeah, low man definitely wins. Low you got to get low. Yeah. Low, 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 low. All right. So, on that, I mean, that drill is not, not, not Meg, not Meg the Stallion low, Nick, uh, Dan. Oh. Oh, no, 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 no. That's a different that, type uh, of low. Like you different said low. about Eugene, too. Like that, that drill is like, hey, look, we're going to cut both your feet off uh, and just stick you here and not let you be what makes you a great player. Right. Uh, but just just go show us you're tough. I think that's what that drill is. Correct. Um, but yeah, Teddy Foster's a guy who I didn't really hype up much or, or really know too too much about, and, and the staff loves him. I yeah. Think the emphasis on tackling. Um, I can imagine what Will Harris thought when he's sitting on a plane back to California, you know, watching cut ups. Um, yeah, I, I think you know what he thought because of how hard Florida went in the transfer portal right after mm -hmm. that first signing period. Uh, and then every day they're just putting an emphasis on tackling. You can only tackle that foam donut so much. I like that they're, um, you know, as safely as possible doing starting all the individual periods as a secondary together, working on tackling real people onto pads of guys that are tackling or holding pads are doing it as safe as possible. Um, but you're not tackling foam donuts on Saturdays. I think you need to practice tackling humans. Let me ask you a question. Do you think we upgraded with the guys we got at star? I think uh, we got some, some legit bodies. Do you think we upgraded from Jaden Hill? Jaden Hill. Cause the season yeah, went I, think so. went, so. I thought Jaden Hill um, had the best season that he, that he has had at Florida. Um, he had 12 missed tackles. I think he was second on the team in missed tackles. Um, but I thought he played well. But I think Florida – I really like Aaron Gates there. He's super athletic. Um, and, and then I like if you put Bridges, Denson, or uh, DJ Douglas there. So, yeah, I, I like that position. I think you're I think you're legitimately four deep at nickel. Well, that's Very great. Nice. That's, that's nice to hear. Um, it wish, I certainly – Personally, wish Jaden Hill the best. Um, the Aggie season will go as Jaden Hill. Jayden Hill goes, right? Um, and if I've said that the last two years, hope in Aggie Nation should not be very high uh, with that. You low key cursed us, bro. You so low key, you low key cursed us a little bit. I did. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm the maybe I'm the problem. You know, I would yeah. say Jaden Hill, Hill, Hill and John Ruiz. I've caused the two biggest issues in. Yeah. Or Gator Sports. Uh, no, it does seem this team has a lot of potential, right? There's a lot of potential upgrades. That's just a matter of putting it all together. That's going to fall on coaching, putting the guys in the right position uh, as well. Let's move to any other thoughts on the defensive side of the ball before I move to the offensive side. What what a corner? Is we good at corner? What corner? I'm mean, having haven't heard a lot about Jakeem Jackson. Heard Devin Moore is healthy and out there moving around a little bit, and he expects to have a great season and. Say this is the healthiest he's ever been, but what we're hearing that corner. 
best ability is availability. Um, Devin Moore, I, I think, has like all SEC type of potential, um, but he's played in exactly half of the games um, that he's been at on campus for. Um, Jason Marshall is going to start. I think Devin Moore starts. Um, Jakeem would be, I think, the third there. You also have Dijon Johnson. Um, haven't heard a ton of smoke about those guys. Devin Moore is really the one that I think we've been focused on just because of how talented he is and, and how much potential he has just mm-hmm. been limited by, you know, shoulder concussion and, and different kind of injuries through two years. What do you see from a coaching perspective on the defensive side of the ball? Um, Gerald Chapman, obviously a guy that he's gone a little viral with his clips about body language. We've heard some good things about Will Harris. Ron Roberts obviously has a an exceptional pedigree there. What do you see or what are you hearing? Obviously you inject three new names into the defensive side of the ball from a coaching perspective. How are you hearing about their gelling and working together and – yeah, it's it's spring. Everyone's happy. Um, Gerald Chapman is like a drill instructor. He's he's gotten on guys that body language stuff. Um, it, we hear it every single time we go out. Uh, doesn't want his guys even on a knee um, while they're you know not actively participating in a drill. Um, I think the Will Harris is, is great. I love a coach out there who's wearing uh, cleats. Uh, participate actively participating in practice. Uh, I think Ron Roberts ha- commands a lot of respect, um, but also seems seems to act younger uh, than his mid fifties age, uh, which might connect with the kids a little bit more. My, I, I'm still interested to see, and I've brought it up before, is like what happens between Ron Roberts and and Austin Armstrong if the defense starts struggling because it's Austin's defense which is a derivative of Ron's defense because Austin was Ron's graduate assistant where he learned partly Mm -hmm. where he learned how to be a coach at this level. Um, But if Florida goes out and gives up 400 yards to UCF, do egos start getting in the way? Um, So that's my negative Nick spin, which I think is just like a realistic question to ask. Like, Hey, you've got Mr. Miyagi and the karate kid, but now the karate kid's teaching Miyagi. And if we lose this tournament, does the Mr. Miyagi be like, Hey man, time for me to go back to being be the head coach here. You lost like half the audience. I'm gonna be yeah. honest with you. There's no way. How, how does no. the karate kid reference yeah. losing people? I mean, they probably know Jaden Smith as karate swipe, kid. Swipe Mr. Miyagi. Mr. Miyagi wasn't in the remake. No, no, I don't think good. so. I never, I didn't see that him though. Wild. So I'm just speaking totally out of line here. I have no idea. Hey, he's whooping right. Jay's ass in Japan, man. Like I was, I was <laughs> upset for my guy, bro. Like you know, <laughs> no, Mr. Miyagi though. All right, let's get under the offensive side of the ball. Before we do that, let's give a quick shout out to our friends over at Home Field Apparel, homefieldapparel.com. Use promo code Stadium and Gale at checkout. Get 15% off of your order. Anything that you'd want, vintage wear, University of Florida, uh, all the vintage logos on the softest cotton, go check them out. Uh, They also have a bunch of stuff from college basketball from probably about 100 different schools around the country. So, again, homefieldapparel.com, promo code STADIUM and Gale at checkout. The offensive side of the ball, uh, we'll talk about quarterbacks here in a second. Montreal Johnson uh, looks to be having a good spring um, insofar as he'll obviously be the the guy with the most amount of touches, uh, most likely on the offense this year. Um, Jacoby Jackson, Trayon Webb, Jordan Baugh, all are getting uh, some of their flowers too for scoring some touchdowns uh, during the scrimmage. Um Nick, any any further updates on the running back room? Obviously, it looks pretty solidified. Uh, anything else that you can share? It seems like Jordan Ball is Jayden. everything. Jaden Ball, sorry, is everything that we could have imagined. Um, yeah, I think I like him and KD. Um, it, it's like I said in my positive uh, revamp. Positive Nick always have been. 
uh, revamp after Trevor Etienne transferred. Um, I said I thought that was more of a hit to the perception of the program than it would be to production on the field. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say that Florida's offense wouldn't be better without Trevor or is better without Trevor Etienne. He would, he would run for another 800 yards and might leave the team in touchdowns. But uh, what you have in Montrell, Trayon Webb, Jaden Ball, and Katie Daniels, I think you're going to be fine um, at running back. I, again, I'm interested in what's the shakeout. I think it was like Montrell and Trevor were like 88% of the carries by running backs last year. So what's the – how does that get divvied up? I think it'll probably be 65% Montrell, 70 maybe. Wow. Um, 60 with 20 and 10, 20, 60, 20, 20, 60, 20, 10, 10 uh, between the freshmen. I just don't know how much you get the freshmen involved. I think Montrell's gotten better as a pass catcher as well. Um, would like to see the running backs more involved. And then – Listen, the same issues you you had with Trevor in pass blocking, you're seeing that with with KD and Jaden. It's just like elite running backs aren't asked to pass block. Right, especially school. from high school, yeah. Um, so then you get to college, and all of a sudden you have a guy like Justice Boone and TJ Searcy coming off the edge, and you have to now try to block these grown men um, when you've never been asked to block before. So you're going to get those same issues. Um with Jaden and KD that you have with Trevor, um, it, it's just a learning curve. Jaden coming for snaps, bro. Yeah, like that running back room, but Jaden Ball is coming for snaps. Everybody better get their affairs in order and grind it out in that room. <laughs> take, take, you know, take every opportunity. You better try to go get you six and, and you know make your case because Jaden Jaden Ball. If you go back and look at his high school film and what he's doing already, he mm -hmm. looks the part. That's a big boy, bro. That's a big guy, him. yeah. It's a big guy, bro. So Nick, how's how the you build check? the SEC running back? Cheat check? Cheat check Ball, Pretty good? Yeah. I don't know. Hey, Nick. I keep staring at that silk screen. It looks like there's a cheat check over his right shoulder. Oh, you're looking at my uh my fine ass flamingo back there? <laughs> it's a flamingo. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I understand where Nick's coming from. Oh, okay, it, okay. It, it does now. look like some butt cheeks with now. the pulled down bikini. It, yeah, it did. that's oh, what it looked like. With the, yeah, if you're not watching the, with YouTube, the mic no arm, idea. with the mic arm, I was like, what is over his shoulder? Uh, Jaden Ball had black face. <laughs> three touchdowns in the oh, man, it looks scrimmage. Crazy. Pull the mic down some so y'all can uh, see. Jacoby Jackson's playing just for the sake of playing depth. Yeah, that'd be okay. RB five. I just wanted to just wanted to ask. All right, so um, three touchdowns in the air during the scrimmage. Uh, Jacoby Jackson had one of them. Uh, T.J. Abrams and redshirt sophomore tight end Hayden Hansen caught mm. uh, touchdowns as well. Uh, Abrams missed last week's scrimmage with a concussion, uh, so Hayden Hansen with another touchdown. TJ Abrams and Jacoby Jackson uh, there. Nick, give us the word on the street. Give us the the Mertz update, the Lagway update. Well, real quick before we move on from oh. running back, I also think we, we say we're not going to miss uh, Jaden Hill. I don't think we're going to miss Trevor Etienne in, in, as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Uman Nealon, I don't think we're going to miss him. So the moral of the story is start wigging out over transfers just vibe out a little bit i don't think we're gonna miss any of those guys Anywho. yeah princely was productive i i 100 percent agree with with fans like if you probably led the country in almost sacks uh as well as leading the team <laughs> in actual sacks um but like there's not i don't think there there were any tears or hurt feelings in the locker room uh when princely announced he was transferring i think Let's the locker room and people in the program are fine with it. Nick, give me your and and Silk so as as well. Give me your interpretation of we'll go back to running back. So we know what we have in Montreal Johnson. We'll put him off to the side. We kind of have an idea of what you see in uh, Trayon Webb from last year. Jaden Baugh is obviously a big bruiser. He's what 230, 240 pounds, big dude. Uh, Kane Daniels, KD Daniels, obviously a little bit smaller, maybe a little bit more scat back. What kind of runners are these guys from what we can tell so far? 
Uh, well, I mean, you, I think we know you've seen Webb and and Montrell. Right, that's why I put him off to the um, side. KD, KD's kind of electric. I think he can make you miss. Um, Jaden's got a little bit of that in, in his game too, but he's also a bruiser. Um, not neither of them are going to be afraid of contact. Um, KD's not as big as Jaden, um, but he's just like small town Mississippi mentality like that nothing on a football field is going to uh intimidate him um so i i th- like i said I, i've said it a couple times like florida's running back room is is going to be fine trevor Etienne uh leaving was worse for the perception especially where he left to right and right, right. it, it's going to be for production on the field yeah okay cool uh let's uh mertz lagway any updates there um they've probably thrown more interceptions than I would like. Um, Both. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, DJ is coming along. Um, there's going to be a learning Maybe curve. The defense is a lot better. You know, you know that has to be it. It's, it's gonna when be you're practicing against yourself, you have to find the silver lining. Yeah. Um, it It's. It's not concerning. Um, DJ's going to come along. They've installed packages for him. I think you'll see him running uh, the football. I think you'll see him playing in every game. There's no sense in redshirting DJ Lagway. If he's what you think he's going to be, he won't be here for four years. Uh, If he isn't, he won't be here for four years, and he'll transfer somewhere else. Um, So there's no sense in, in redshirting him. Um, I think Florida will use him. It, it's uh, I've said on the, on the show before. It's it's a weird quarterback room because Graham Mertz is going to be 24 years old in December. Uh, is entering his fifth year, his second year in the offense. Um, he's almost more of a collaborator when they're game planning and doing mm. stuff because he understands why we're running this play. Might be to set up a play in the second quarter, uh, and just has that kind of depth of knowledge of the playbook and what they're trying to accomplish while DJ is getting everything thrown at him. They're installing something Tuesday, watching film Wednesday, and then installing something completely different on Thursday. Um, and, and it's just a lot for a young guy, but I mean, arm talent is there. Uh, the athleticism is there. I think the biggest thing for DJ will be getting the high school out of him where mm-hmm. you go back and you watch like, Noel Devine, Chris Rainey, high school highlights. Chris Rainey might have run 25 yards backwards to make 12 people miss to then get a 15-yard gain. DJ was the biggest player on the field for probably the last two years, the fastest player in the field probably the last two years. Uh, You need to learn that, hey, throwing a ball away is fine. Uh, That's not going to kill our team, kill the offense, kill a drive. You don't need to try to scramble around and make something out of nothing. If nothing's there, throw the ball away, live to the next play. So I think that's a, a, also a natural progression for somebody as talented as him uh, and for any freshman quarterback, learning that uh, throwing a ball away or maybe even taking a sack is better than, you know, trying to force something that's not there. Sure. Sure. Cool. Cool. Um, let's see, we've kind of touched on the wide receiver position, still probably missing, uh, one more person in that room. Uh, Andy Jean is still in a no contact Jersey, correct? Yeah. Okay. So Gators certainly lacking some proven depth, at least at the wide receiver position. You have Khalil Jackson, Shamar DK and, uh, Eugene Wilson as the likely starters tight end. We've talked a little bit about Hayden Hansen. Uh, Nick thinks he's Jonathan Odom. You know, we'll we'll find out in a couple of months. Uh, offensive line, this will be the last thing that we touch on today. Offensive line, I know there's still a lot of positivity coming out of that. Any new updates since this time last week? Uh, no, a lot of uh, Brandon Crenshaw Dixon and Devon Manuel. Um, after that, you're really playing Caden Jones and Fletcher Westfall at, at tackle because Cam um, – Cam is out and Austin's out. You'll get those two back. Florida thinks they'll be four deep at tackle. I think uh, Jake Slaughter continues to play well. That's your starting center. Rod Kearney's played a little bit of guard, mostly center there. 
Um, and, and I think Najee Harris is your starting left guard, and you've got to figure out right guard. Okay. And Florida will be active in the portal uh, looking for a receiver, an, an interior offensive lineman, and another tight end. Okay. All right. Well, we've got uh, practices this week. We have the Orange and Blue debut on Saturday at noon. Clock. What? 1 p.m. 1 p.m. At 1 p.m. in Gainesville. The baseball game is after. If you want to go watch uh, them play, go cheer them on. They need some uh, luck and encouragement or some, some fan support and encouragement uh, at that game as well. Uh, but the game will be at 1 o'clock in Gainesville, Florida. So if you have the ability to go, go. It is sponsored by Florida Victorious. I know that they're doing a bunch of events if you want to support uh, what Florida Victorious is doing in the NIL space. So with that being said, gentlemen, I think we've covered offense, defense, special teams. Nick, uh, where are we at with special teams? we got a kicker. Yeah, Chase Mack and uh, Jeremy Crawshaw. Okay. How are we doing in special teams getting 11 people on the field? Is that happening yet? You know, it's a struggle. Um, oh, maybe practice in special teams. You don't you don't have 11 <laughs> fingers, so it's tough. I get it. Um, no, I think Florida is really, really excited about adding Joe Houston. Um, I, I think if you look at the metrics, which Florida likes to point out, yeah. metric-wise – Florida was really good in every aspect of special teams, like great huh? kick returns, great punt returns, great. You can say this is kicking, my thing great with that. punting, but like is you the, can statistically yeah. look at the course of an entire year and say there was only three times that we had penalties or four times that we had penalties on all of the special teams plays per game. So there's probably 10 of them, right? So let's just say 120 games. You can say only crucial. four times, right? And you're like, Dan, that's less than 4%. That's 3%. Look, 97% of the time we did it right. But if those 3% cost you wins, then I don't buy it, right? Like that's my thing with looking and identifying problems and saying, hey, we need to get better and we can do that job better and this is what we're doing to fix it. And obviously they've made some hires to hopefully do that. But you can't look back and say, well, 98% of the time we did it right. Well, it's because two of those percentage points cost you two wins, right? So that's BS. Anyway. Yeah. Fun with numbers with Dan. <laughs> um, I think uh, Florida really likes Joe Houston. I think they got a steal um, in the special new off the field special teams coach. I, forgive me for not knowing what uh, – creative license they took when assigning him uh, whatever title they assigned him. Um, but he will help with special teams. I think organizationally is what, where Florida lacked. Um, no if you're going to point to having great averages nationally, SEC averages for, you know, all of the metrics for special teams uh, organizationally, they were a disaster. And, and by that, I mean, not having, your card updated when Eugene Wilson changes his number to three and uh, in the season opener, having two guys in the same Jersey weekly, having 10 guys on the field, which to answer your point, you don't get penalized for competing with lower than the allotted number of players. Uh, they didn't have 12 too many times, but they had 10 plenty. So organizationally, I think, you know, uh, that's where Florida is looking for help special teams. Uh, and I think they have, uh, believe they found that with Joe Houston. Nice. Mm -hmm. Top five public school in the country. Hopefully we find somebody that can count to 11. Uh, gentlemen, any final thoughts before we get out of here? I got a question for both of y'all real quick. Yep. What do you, what do you got your eye on for spring that you want to see outside of special teams? I don't think we're going to do a lot of that. Mm -hmm. but what are you looking for improvement wise depth chart wise anything in particular i'll go um if it's one verse ones i think if they do that then i do want to look at the line of scrimmage right because we've talked about the offensive line getting a little bit better but we've also talked about the defensive line making some some big strides so i'm going to be heavily focused on the line of scrimmage how does that offensive line which has been hyped up as better versus the defensive line, which has a ton of guys 
really good guys on that front four, how they match up. Because I think if we're, if the defensive line is what they think it's going to be, then it could be one of the better units in the SEC. And if the offensive line can guard that group, that's what I'm going to look for. Yeah. I don't, think the, face. I don't think the offensive line got better in the off season. I've said that. So if the defensive line isn't getting to the quarterback, then, then I'm worried about the defensive line. Then there's, and, and then, then I think that, then I think we have spent all spring over hyping the defensive line because I don't think the offensive line got better and you're missing your starting left tackle right now who won't play. You're missing your third, mm -hmm. you know, swing tackle in cam weights. Um, so if the defensive line isn't consistently winning against an offensive line that I don't think is very good, uh, then I'm then then I'm coming out of the spring concerns. Yeah, hmm. I'm what watching. Are, you, oh, go ahead. I'm watching wide receiver. Uh, I know our defensive back has been getting a lot of like praise, and then we just heard that the quarterbacks have been throwing interceptions in, in practice. So that could be wide receivers getting separation. So I, I want to see what that room looks like for the spring game. Like who, who shows some flashes versus that secondary. Um, outside of who we bring in in the portal, we need this depth chart on campus, every guy, because you're only going to bring in one one guy to kind of just you know, throw some icing on top of whatever cake you got here. So those guys in that room, somebody got to step up. A. Mazel, Andy mm -hmm. Jean, right, Burke. I mean, at this time, Point, it's like shit to get off the pot for Burke. Yeah. So, like, it's just an opportunity for some one of these guys outside of Eugene Wilson. I haven't heard a whole lot of progress and buzz mm -hmm. with the wide receiver room. So, that's what I'm watching wide receiver DB. Is that what you're looking at, Nick? Was the defensive line, or did you have another? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, we've got wide receivers, line of scrimmage uh, for this game. Pop in the chat what you're looking forward to uh, the most. Uh, for those of you that are watching, um, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button while you're there. Uh, but, yeah, what unit are you most looking forward to uh, in the orange and blue debut? Uh, one final ad read so Nick can head off to Augusta. Uh, give our friends over at Alumni Hall a visit, whether you're in Gainesville this weekend uh, for the orange and blue game or online at alumnihall.com. They are right off Archer Road, right near the Chick-fil-A. Uh, you can't miss it. Huge storefront. Uh, but again, Alumni Hall is going to have the best things that you could ever want. Florida Gators related from apparel uh, to polos to T-shirts, all sports involved, accessories, gifts, tailgating supplies, whatever you need for you or the Florida Gator fan in your life. Go check out alumnihall.com or go visit them on Archer Road in Gainesville, Florida. Silk, you have song of the week this week so while you think about that uh, i want to thank everybody for listening and watching today uh if those of you that are listening on the podcast platforms we also do this on youtube those that are watching on youtube if you want to go check it out again or share with your friends we drop every tuesday morning at around 5 a.m for your listening in the car so again want to shout out our sponsors lucy go visit them lucy.co forward slash stadium Alumni Hall and Home Field Apparel, homefieldapparel.com, promo code Stadium and Gale at checkout. So, so Man, I'm gonna, I like this Sir, new Sir album. I'm going to go with the joint with him and uh, Anderson Pack, Poetry in Motion. Sir, new album called Heavy, RB Vibes. What was the song? Heavy? No, the album's heavy. The song is Poetry in Motion. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, we appreciate everybody for watching. We will see you at the same corner, same time next week. Thank you guys so much.